On this cold winter night, I can feel your hand in mine. And suddenly, I'm sure that everything is What's up, heroes? My name is Siler Clone, and welcome to Pixel Fade's newest project, Cowrie After Story. As its name implies, this takes place right after Ace Academy, kind of a continuation of our romance route, if you will. If you have not seen the Cowrie route, I'll leave the link to the first uh, part of my playthrough of it in the description down below. This is going to be super fun. After an intro like that, how is that not going to be stuck in your head? How do you not want to rock your head out to that song? Anyway, let's just go ahead and, and get on started here. This is all kind of new to me. The uh, the intro screen, fun fact, as I'm putting in my not-so-creative name, used to be when they were in Alpha was just the crystalline menu screen, so it confused the ever-loving daylights out of me when I was trying it out on Alpha. So let's jump right into it. The bus is busy with the bustle of the holidays. Families sit close together, wearing thick jackets and knitted hats. Some people have shopping bags or wrapped presents huddled in their arms. Okay, we're on a train, I think. This looks like the train. Yes, it's the train. Okay. I let out a loud yawn, my head lolling onto my shoulder. First it was a flight, then a train, then a bus, and now another bus. Okay, it's a bus, not a train. All of this travel is wearing me out. Well, yeah, traveling's exhausting. I remember the conversation with my family before I left. All of us had been gathered in the kitchen discussing our plans for the holidays. A familiar memory plays in my mind. Oh, I'm so excited for Christmas. I just want to swim in the ocean. Well, aren't you the cutest thing, but why are you down there in the corner? Aunt Yuki sighs dreamily. And bask underneath the sun. Oh, Aunt Yuki, you you are looking good as well. Do you think we'll see dolphins? Maybe even swim with them? Oh my gosh, that would be so amazing! Swimming with the dolphins in winter? What are you guys talking about? Uncle Kaito grins. We're discussing where we should go for Christmas. Yuki suggested someplace warm, like Hawaii. Along with, you know, the thousands of other people, but warm for the holidays is good. Hawaii is amazing. Good thing I, I worked on my beach bod. It won't feel like Christmas without snow. Sounds just beachy. I'm gonna I'm gonna you know, sounds just beachy. We're gonna we're gonna make a pun here. Not a good one, but a pun nonetheless. Guess that means we're going to seize the day. Uncle Kaito and Aunt Yuki laugh. Nikki groans, but there's a smile on her face. They appreciate my humor. Oh, that was a particularly bad one, bro. But you laugh. I mean, cringing is still acknowledging the joke. Well, well, someone is salty. As fun as that sounds, though, I might not be able to join you all. 
Kaori asked me to spend Christmas with her family. And you'd like to go, right? Yes. Yeah. Nikki gasps and bounces slightly in excitement. She scoots closer to me. Can I help you? Oh, meeting her family? That's a big step. She's right, you know. You have to go. I know Uncle Kaito. Well, I know. Siler knows, but this Siler might not. I let out a relieved breath. I was hoping you guys would say that. You sure you won't be upset if I don't join you for Christmas this year? Aunt Yuki shakes her head. I'm sure we can manage without you. And if we can't, well, I hear there are a lot of cocktails on the beach. <laughs> Plus, you and me. That's why she has the cocktails. He gives her an affectionate squeeze. Aunt Yuki looks up at Uncle Kaito with a wide smile. She leans her head against his shoulder. Yeah, you're now uninvited on this trip. Well, fine. But I didn't want to go anyways. You could have your son and your beach and your sand and your whales. But more importantly, you were just asked to meet the parents. So what's the plan? Do you know what you're going to say? Well, I'm going to start with, hello, my name is Siler. I figured that was going to be a great spot. Uh... Well, what are they like? Does she have any siblings? Hopefully she has a cool little sister. Well, obviously everyone needs one. Let me know if I have one of those. Nikki, slow down. Uncle Kaito puts a hand on Nikki's shoulder. She pauses and takes a deep breath. Sorry, you're right. I'm just so excited. I mean, I remember when he was still fumbling over his words every time a girl even looked at him. You don't recall this because it didn't happen. That's definitely not true. Nikki shrugs, grinning. If you say so. So, do you know what her family is like? Not really. Kaori mentioned she has sisters. Nikki is about to speak, but I continue. Older sisters, but that's it. What about presents? Would you get Kaori something nice? I better have. Oh, we aren't doing that this year. Oh, he's just as clueless as I thought he would be. The th all three of them stare blankly at me. Then Nikki laughs. <laughs> Sorry, I thought I heard you say you weren't buying your girlfriend a Christmas present. That's right. Even he realizes how dumb that sounds. Nikki's drilling stare makes my confidence waver. Kauri and I discussed it, and we both agreed no presents. Then we'll make sure to write that on your tombstone. Nikki bursts out laughing. Too accurate. Especially with Kauri, she, she will kill me. Uncle Kaito, help me out here. I've lived long enough to know not to argue with women. Smart man. Aunt Yuki takes pity on me. That's enough teasing for now. For now is the keyword. They live far out in the countryside, I think. Uncle Kaito chuckles. Ah, yes. The freezing, terrible, snowy country. Nikki giggles. Mm -hmm. I bet you're going to pretend it's cold so you can cuddle up for warmth. That was part of the plan. Ah. Uh, Classic tactic, complete with hand-holding and a possible, you are coming to my coat with me. How did they find my plan book? Is that what you tried, Uncle Kaito? He grins. A gentleman never tells. That's a yes, and he still tries it. I bet he still tries it. The three of them burst into laughter, the sound fading into my memory. I blink open my my eyes open as the bus finally rumbles to a stop. We're here. Oh my gosh, are you adorable? My god, that's surprising. Oh, she's so cute and happy. Fiery red hair focuses into my vision. Kauri glances over at me, then smiles when she notices I'm awake. Her eyes are bright with excitement. And even though it's been a long trip, she looks radiant. 
waking up to her face is always a pleasure, and I can't help but think about how lucky and happy I am to be with her. These last couple of months together as a couple have been a dream come true. Kauri cocks her head. Is something wrong? No, everything is just perfect. I shake my head and smile. No, let's go. To be fair, she is always radiant. She nods, smiling back. We gather our belongings and hop off of the bus. Then we flag down a taxi. I look over at Kauri. She gazes out of the window, watching the trees fly by. I wonder how long it's been since she's been home. The taxi takes us through the countryside. The sun is starting to dip low behind the mountains. Purple cotton candy clouds hang over the snowy plains and frozen forests. I wonder what kind of house Kauri grew up in. Would her parents like me? My stomach flutters with nerves. Well, this is a cute little house. I like this outside. Very quaint. We finally drive up a long path, taking us up a massive hill. A decent-sized Japanese-style house sits on top. I pay the driver and exit the car, hauling our suitcases to the door. See, a gentleman carries both suitcases. Kauri digs into her purse for the house key, but as soon as she finds it, the door swings open. Do you have one of them automatic doors? An older woman with wavy strawberry blonde hair stands in the doorway. She wears a sunny grin. Kauri! Oh, hello, Sophia Itami. I can see where Kauri gets her good looks from. She throws her arms around her so hard, Kauri coughs. Oh, I've missed you so much! It's been a while since she's been home. She squeals, squeezing her harder. Her arms must be a vice because Kauri can't seem to squirm out of her grasp. Never mess with a mother and her baby. It's so good to see you. And we have a live 2D Kauri, so the same rendering engine as Crystalline. And she is great. Kauri's voice comes out pinched and tight. M Mom! Can't breathe! Oh. It's going to take some getting used to after a a Ace Academy where she's just flat on, on the screen. She pulls away and smiles sheepish. Sorry, dear. I'm just so thrilled to see you. As she takes a step back, her gaze lands on me. She blinks, noticing me for the first time. Oh, what's this? What's this? Rude? Who? I'm a who. Her eyes suddenly light up. A boy? Um, last, last I checked. That's not exactly the reaction I expected. Did... Kauri not tell her about me? Hello, I'm Siler. She lets out a loud squeal, my ears. Kauri finally has a boyfriend. Kauri's face turns pink. Mom, calm down. But her mother bounces in place. Oh my goodness, I dreamed of this moment, but I never thought I'd see the day. For her first boyfriend? Ouch! Yes, it is me, the Prince of Kauri's Dreams. Nice to meet you. Uh, this this one sounds hilarious. I, I want to do this one. I chuckle and wrap my arm around Kauri's shoulders. No need to dream any longer. I promise that I am very real. Kauri turns beet red while her mother lets out another little squeal. I had a feeling a move like that would, would make Mama happy. Oh, yes, you are. How fun. As opposed to... I hear another voice from the doorway. Did someone say boyfriend? I, I guess Mama does produce the good looks. Two beautiful girls stand in the doorway on either side of their mother. They have the same paprika-colored hair as Kauri, but theirs is longer, and not a curl looks out of place. They look identical, except for the different outfits. The one on the right stares at me blankly. 
She cocks her head to the side. What? Do you like what you see? Too bad. I'm your sister's. Well, this is a welcome surprise. Meanwhile, the other one turns to Kauri. I watch as a slow, devilish grin spreads across her face. Kauri? You didn't mention anything about a boy. Because it's not a big deal! And because I'm off limits to the two of you. The other twin is still looking at me in silent wonder. She walks around and then pokes me gently on the arm. Can... Do you need some help? I can't believe it. He's actually real. Kauri frowns. Of course he's real. You two are being ridiculous. What are you talking about? We're just excited for you. By making a whole bunch of fun of you. The girl turns to me and smiles. By the way, I'm Ayame. She gestures to her twin. And this is my sister Naomi. Naomi giggles. Sorry about all of this. Kauri's never mentioned a boy before. Let alone brought one home. You're not sorry. You're enjoying this. I'm an older sibling myself. I enjoy making fun of my younger one endlessly. A boy? Oh. Hi, sir. I'm gonna behave now. An older man, who I presume to be Kauri's dad, appears in the door in the open doorway. Oh, hello, young man. Where did you come from? Are you lost? He's kind of in on it too. His voice is so sincere that I'm almost not sure what to say. He's either messing with me, or he's dead serious. Uh, no. I came here with Kauri. He blinks. Oh? Her mother beams and digs an elbow into his side, signaling him to stop. Sweetie, this is Kauri's boyfriend. Her dad looks at me, shocked. What? Really? Kauri seems to be struggling to keep her composure. Her face is cherry red, her expression a cross between embarrassed and annoyed. Like I said, it's not a big deal. Just let us inside already. Oh yeah, that's right. I forgot. We're sitting outside and based on that skirt she's wearing, she's probably a little cold. Her mother gasps. Yes, of course. What was I thinking? Come in, come in. She moves aside and gestures for us to enter. I genuinely don't think her dad thought I was her boyfriend but that's not the reaction I'm terrified. He's probably going to end up threatening me later. The others break apart to give us room and I follow Kauri inside. They return to preparing the house while Kauri's mother leads us through. Wow, this is a beautiful home. It's a nice little living area and that view there dead center is gorgeous. It's a traditional Japanese style house but the decor helps it feel cozy and modern. Everything is precise and neat. There's a Christmas tree off to the side, but there aren't any decorations on it yet. You have a very nice home. Her mother beams. Thank you. Where should I unpack? Oh, you can stay in Kauri's room. I beg, I beg pardon. Pongo, I, I think my ears must have just deceived me. I'm pretty sure she said... You can stay in Kauri's room. But I, 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 must have, I must have heard that a little wrong. It's gotta be wrong. It has to be. What? I like the sound of this. Sounds fine. I'm, I mean, we're gonna go with my initial reaction of... What? My first burns hot. My face burns hot. Did I hear that right? Uh, are you sure about that? Her mother nods. Of course, sweetie. Make yourself at home. What? Cowrie stiffens. What? Why are we sharing a room when we have a guest room? First of all, why are you complaining we've done this before? Her mother smiles serenely. Tell us you were bringing a guest. You didn't tell your parents you were bringing me to meet them? 
So? Why does that mean he can't sleep in there? Oh, but sweetie, we just have so much stuff in there right now. What kind of stuff? Kauri arches an eyebrow. What kind of stuff? Same wavelength. That's why we're together. A nervous laugh puffs, puffs out of her mother. She waves a hand. Oh, just a bunch of junk. The room is basically a storage room right now and really messy. You don't want to bring him in there. It's so embarrassing. Yet it's not embarrassing to say, no, share the same bed with my daughter in the room that's just right down the hall from me and your father's. Kauri's eyes narrow as she looks at her mother with suspicion. That's all right. I can sleep on the couch. This will be the best of nights. Let's not make a big deal about it. I mean, I can sleep on the couch. Clearly, Kauri's a bit uncomfortable. Hey, I can sleep on the couch. It's really no big deal. Her mother gasps. Her eyes widen and she shakes her head. Oh, sweetie, the couch is so uncomfortable. I go to university. I don't care where I sleep as long as I sleep. What are you talking about? The couch is fine. Ah, well, we got a new couch and it's as hard as a brick. You know, I regret my purchase. Oh, I should have never bought it online. If if I didn't sense your tone the, the, the way I am, if I'm misreading this, it almost sounds like you want this to happen. You're pushing me in that direction of in that bedroom you go. Why do I get the feeling that she's avoiding Kauri's question? Kauri's mother pushes us towards the hallway. I, I guess it's settled. I'm staying in the room. Happy unpacking, you two. Dinner will be ready soon. Firmly dismissed, Kauri leads the way down the hall towards her room. I wonder what it, it will be like. Sleek and modern, a bunch of mecha stuff everywhere, anime posters, maybe? A moment later, she opens a door. I'm gonna, what the heck? Assumingly, this this is her room, and right there above the bed, I see a, a pongo sort of plushie next to the little chipmunk guy. We got some penguins and some books. You know, some nice nice little seating there at the, at the floor if you want to sit on there. There's a green budget Charmander along with some sort of dog thing or it looks like a, a Digimon and a computer and a... Either that's a speaker or my music nerd is showing and a metronome on her desk. It's most likely a speaker. I'm dumb. But... And the walls are pink and red. And interesting. The walls are pastel pink. There's a large bed with a plush blanket pink sheets and matching pillows. A white dresser sits off to the side. Her curtains are flowy and frilly. A pile of stuffed animals sit propped up on her bed. If I didn't know any better, I'd guess this was a little girl's room. I didn't expect Cowrie's space to be so girly. You pissed off Nikki too, huh? This is not what I was expecting. So, is pink your favorite color? Don't say anything. I mean, I can make the joke here. I think she'll she'll like it. I should know her favorite color. So is pink your favorite color? A half smile lifts my face. Kauri, you didn't tell me pink was your favorite color. What? I gesture to the room. I haven't been here in a while, okay? I'm not judging you. It's a good color. What's wrong with pink? I resist the urge to smirk. Weren't you just here last year? Kauri freezes. Shut up! I'm not making fun of you, stop it. Her face burns red as I laugh, mostly at her reaction. Kauri wheels her suitcase over to her dresser. She unzips it and starts unpacking her belongings, stuffing her clothes into her drawers. Where should I start unpacking my stuff? Kauri nods to the closet. It's fairly empty in there since I don't stay here much anymore. Feel free to hang up some of your stuff. Okay, thanks. I haul my suitcase to the other side of the room and start on hanging up my clothes. 
I have a few jackets, some shirts, snow pants. It never hurts to be prepared, right? It's winter time, of course. I'm in the middle of fishing out an extra pair of snow boots when... Hey, are you done yet? Wait, what? And she either was wearing that the entire time or changed right behind me. I turn around. Kauri zips up her suitcase and stuffs it under her bed. What? You're finished already? She raises an eyebrow. Yeah, aren't you? She glances over my shoulder and box. How did you shove all that in there? <clears throat> You're just faster at unpacking. That's what she said. I packed just enough. I mean, you're just faster at unpacking, I guess. A blush crawls into my face. What are you talking about? You're obviously just faster at unpacking. Kauri raises an eyebrow. Yeah, because I didn't bring my entire house with me. It's because you went to your house. You didn't have to. You are returning to it. She's about to respond, but nothing comes out. Heh. <laughs> Got her there. Kauri glances at the clothes I already hung up in her closet, and then at the massive pile of clothes still in my suitcase. She groans and face palms. Suddenly, Kauri's mom calls out for calls for us. Her voice is faint from the kitchen. Dinner is ready. Perfect timing ends that conversation. Plus, I'm starving. I follow Kauri into the kitchen. It's a nice little kitchen. Some nice knife sets and some wine glasses hanging there. I love the table. Absolutely love the table and chairs. That's really cool. Our plates and drinks are already set on the table with the rest of the family waiting for us. It looks like her mom made some kind of chicken and rice dish. As I start to dig in, I glance at Kauri's sisters again. Now, which one was Naomi and which one was Ayami? They look the same, I can't tell. There's something about Ayami and Naomi. I feel like I've seen them somewhere before. So what do you guys do? Are you done with college? They nod. Yeah, we've been done with school for a while. We model and design fashion. That sounds awesome. That's probably why they seem familiar. I must have recognized them from a magazine or an ad or something like that. They share identical smirks. Thank you. Why don't you tell us about yourself? What do you like to do for fun? Pilot gears, be with Kauri, chill with my friends and play video games. You know, all of these options are, are pretty good, but I, I would think the first thing I would want to do is well, you know, how, what brought me and Kauri together, and that was piloting gears. It's a great hobby. It's what I'm going to school for. I like to participate in gear matches. They look impressed. Oh, is that how you two met? I nod. Yeah. Kauri needed a new member for her team, so I jumped in. It's been great. Naomi nods. Naomi smirks. So, what are your intentions with our little sister anyway? Well, grilling me right off the bat, huh? Kauri glares at her. Naomi? What? It's a good question. So, random question. Her mother is practically bouncing in her seat. Yes, yes, it's a great question. Probably one more reserved for her father when him and I are alone and he's got a sharp object. You too? Threatening me with said sharp object. I really like her. She's my sexy little firecracker. We're just taking it slow. I mean, I would think that taking it slow and really like her is kind of one and the same. I wouldn't dare call her my sexy little firecracker in front of her folks. That would, I'd get in trouble for that one from Cowrie, not the, not the parents, but I, I really like her. Butterflies flutter in my stomach. I just really like her. My voice is so sincere that Kauri stiffens. She glances at me before turning a little pink. 
She's a very driven person. It's what drew me to her when we first met. What? And also kind of why I almost ran her over with my bike. I was just so irresistibly drawn to her that I just had, I had to be with her. She glances at me in surprise and flushes crimson. She seems almost shy. I didn't know that. Kauri's mom lets out a little squeal. Way to ruin the moment, Sophia! Oh my goodness. What a gentleman. You two are so perfect. Mr. Itami, sir, please don't murder me. Kauri's dad nods. A hint of a smile on his lips, but he doesn't say anything. Eventually, the conversation dies down as we finish dinner. By the time I'm done, I'm feeling stuffed and happy. I bring my plate over to the sink where Kauri's mom is already doing the dishes. Do you need some help? Oh no, sweetie, it's been a long day. I'm sure you're exhausted. It's washing dishes, ma'am, I can do this. I nod. Well, thank you very much. Dinner was great. She beams. Thank you, sweetie. I'm glad you liked it. I smile and start to turn away. You two have a fun night now. What? A, a fun night? Does she mean... No. She possibly couldn't mean what it sounds like. Could she? I shake the thought out of my head and return to Cowrie's room. I turn the doorknob and walk straight in. To see Cowrie digging around in her drawer for something to change into. She freezes, blinking up at me. Sorry, I just need to grab something to change into real quick. I grab my pajamas from her closet and rush for the bathroom. That was close. After I finish changing, I make my way back into the hall and knock on Kauri's door. I'm not making that mistake again. Hey, is it okay for me to come in? Uh, one second. I hear some shuffling before she speaks. Okay, come in. When I walk in, the bedroom is bathed in dark blue shadows. Kauri's dressed in some comfy-looking pajamas. Her hair is down and a little disheveled. She glances at me, and then the bed. A blush flares up into my face. I stand awkwardly by the door. Kauri lies down and rolls over so I can't see her face. Um, what are you waiting for? I, I, that's a very good question. I mean, granted... At least the one time that we know of we've done this, there was a pillow divide. I grin as I settle down beside her. Kauri's bed is surprisingly soft. Cuddle time. Maybe I can get a, a, a kiss goodnight. Go to sleep. Uh, may, maybe I could get a goodnight kiss for being on my best behavior tonight? Please? My hands glide down Kauri's back, and I feel her stir. Hmm? She glances back at me, and I give her a quick peck on the lips, wrapping my arms around her. She turns in my embrace, and her lips find mine again. I taste her strawberry chapstick as we kiss. Good flavor. My hands run over her shoulder blades, while her fingers thread through my hair. I feel my heart expanding as she deepens the kiss. Breathlessly, we pull away. Staring into her eyes, I've never felt so complete. She gives me a small smile. I'm really happy you're here with me. Me too. Gently, she leans in and plants another kiss on my lips. Good night. Good night. Rolling onto my back, Kauri rests her head against my chest, listening to my heartbeat. The steady rhythm of her breathing relaxes me, and soon, I drift off to sleep. What a way to end the And my night music from Crystalline is in here. Nice, but that's a great way to go to sleep. Just with her on her, your chest after a long day of traveling. 
the sun is bright and blinding, searing through Kauri's windows, and we'll see what the next day has in store for us. Next time, I'm going to end the episode here. This is going to be a great little adventure, and I didn't say it at the beginning, but Kauri is the only character in this that's going to have the live 2D animation. At least as of now, I don't know if there are any plans for them to do so in the future. If they do, cool, but that's why we have the little portraits at the bottom. I just like the fact that we have a live 2D Kauri. I, I really like it, but I hope you guys do like it as well. If you do, let me know in the comments down below or by hitting that like button. Doing either or really does help me out. If you're new to the channel or have not done so already, make sure to unleash your power by hitting the subscribe button down below today as well and ringing that little bell to know when new videos go live. And feel free to follow me on social media, links to those in the description down below. And I'll see all you heroes in the next video. Thanks so much for watching. May the force be with you and have a great rest of your day. Take care.